Hello Nippies, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, hello, I'm Nips, a freelance artist. And today we're gonna be working on the continuation of the Rune Terra, Legends of Rune Terra deck doodles. And for those of you that don't know what this is, I have another video speed painting some of these doodles already, so I'll link it in the top right and also in the description. But essentially, Legends of Rune Terra is a card game made by Riot Games, and so I love to play this game. Those of you that know me from a while ago know that I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh! and tons of card games, so I play Legends of Runeterra pretty often. And so in the game, of course, like any game, there's like metas and um, popular things that people play. And in this game, um, you have champion combinations for the decks. And so these doodles are essentially combining the popular champion combinations of the decks and doing little doodles off of them. And so here we are with our first doodle, which is Sejuani and Timo. And um, for this one, there were so many different combinations that I wanted to do with this one, just because like Timo can be played with so many other champions and uh, Sejuani as well. And so you'll see that when I did this one, I ended up putting a little Ezreal in the bottom because Ezreal has been played with both the champions, which was really cute. And a lot of these doodles, what I've been doing is kind of like mixing up their props and their accessories. And so you'll see here, Timo's kind of like struggling to hold up uh, and wear the Sejuani helmet, iconic Sejuani helmet. And it's like super heavy because of course it is because warrior boar mommy Sejuani, you know? And then she's just cutely wearing the little Timo hat. So I think this is, this is the, the one of the most like wholesome ones that I have aside from the Pantheon Yumi one. I love this one. And um, it's been a while since I've done these as I'm recording them. I think it's been a couple months since I've done these. So hopefully I don't draw too much of a blank as I'm commentating over these. Um, but yeah, so these are all done on um, initially on Clip Studio Paint. Those of you that have seen my process, a lot of you will see me do most of my stuff on Photoshop, but a lot of the times I doodle, uh, especially a lot of my quick sketches on Clip Studio Paint, just because I have a brush that I really, really love on this program, which you can see on the top left, it's called like, like in the India ink category and it's called Bit Husky. And it has like this really nice texture, but it, it really just like, it just looks so good. The lines look just look so good. And it's the same brush that I use for my comic off sell, which is 18 plus. It's being revamped right now, but I'll put the links in the description down below if you're interested. And Clip Studio is also the program that I use primarily, if not entirely for the comic. I usually do the text and the finishing touches on Photoshop, but I just love Clip Studio. And a lot of the times, the program is just much better for really loose uh, doodles and stuff. If I get into Photoshop, a lot of the times I just kind of like overthink things and I want to go a little too far on the colors and the shading and everything. And so I find Clip Studio, at least for me, a very like relaxing, like no pressure program. And yeah, so that's a lot of the times that's why I use it. So if you see me switch back and forth between the programs, that is probably why. Okay, so here you'll see that I bring it into Photoshop and I'm adding kind of like the finishing touches there. So a lot of these doodles, 
as you can see, hashtag just a sketch. I know you guys mean me a lot about that. I really try to keep it sketchy and not go too overboard. So you'll see that I tried to leave it for the most part like flat colored and just add a little bit of shading here and there just to give it some dimension, but not like add too much work. Um, you see the little Ezreal in the bottom left corner and just adding like a gradient map on top to make it look nicer. And that's pretty much it for that one. I, I really like how that one turned out. This next one, I just noticed that you could see the, the chapter, the chapter tabs on the top. Um, but yeah, this next one is pretty spicy. This next one is Ezreal and Draven. Oh my Lord. This one was, this one was a trip to do on Twitch, but everybody was having so much fun and just egging me on in Twitch. Everybody just, you know, horny on me. <laughs> But it was really interesting. I had a, a, like a very specific vision for like the foreshortening. You got the the cabedon, the the you know just Ezreal just kind of cornering Draven into a wall because, you know, Draven's the bottom. You know, obviously. Um, but I really love this. I, I love the 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 wild bisexual energy in this drawing. And it was a lot of fun. I had to really work on like the angles. You see me flipping a lot. A lot of you asked me why I flip so much and that it's really irritating when you're watching the, the speed paints. And I apologize so much. I usually have a problem with how much I flip the drawing because my eyes like adjust pretty fast to the drawing. And so I have to flip it because if not, it just looks horrible. And I've also gotten used to I don't want to say gotten used to, I say I want to say I've gotten spoiled by being able to draw certain lines and certain angles like subconsciously. So now like I feel like sometimes unless I flip the drawing, like I can't do certain lines and maybe we need to work on that because that doesn't exist on paper. And so, you know, maybe I actually just can't draw. So I am sorry in advance. As always, if it's really obnoxious to see me flipping the drawing over and over, but um, yeah. And so here I'm continuing to add lines, hashtag just a sketch, right? Like I'm trying to remind myself, I think if I remember while I was streaming this to not go overboard with like the details of the lines, but a lot of the times you'll see here that my lines get much, much looser as, as I move away from the faces, because I always mention that a lot of my drawings, as long as the faces look really good, um, or at least really good for like what I'm aiming for, like the standard of the drawing then I'm pretty much fine because everything else is kind of like a side piece to it. A lot of the times when I'm drawing, I just, I just want the faces and the expressions to look really, really good. And everything else can just kind of complement that. So you'll see that as I do everything else, it's pretty much just really loose lines and figures and potentially shapes. Um, I don't know, as I'm looking at this, I feel like so embarrassed. This drawing is like kind of spicy. <laughs> I don't know. Now that I see it in hindsight, I'm like, oh my Lord, what was I thinking? <laughs> Chat kind of egged me on, so I don't know. But it was a really fun drawing. I think that a lot of the shading, I think I talk about this a lot, but I love like backlighting, like rim lighting for those of you that don't know. It's just essentially, the light is coming from behind the subject. And so the whole subject is in shadow. And then you have like, like highlights essentially like around the character or characters. And so it's called like rim lighting cause it's only the light is only on the rim. And so that is like one of my favorite lighting styles. It just makes everything look so cinematic. And so I don't, it's so mood, like the mood is perfect and it's, it's also kind of easy to do, especially if you're doing like little sketches and stuff, you just kind of slap that shit on a, on a sketch and a doodle. And it just, it looks 30 times better. I don't know why cheating, but also it looks great. So I don't know. Um, and especially for, for a drawing like this, it just looked, it just looked so cool. I was like, how could I not do that lighting on this? And so you'll see me here just kind of like adding his tattoos, kind of realizing that the angle that I drew his face in was a little bit awkward because his tattoos like go straight down his face. And so I had to do kind of like some scuffed like sideways thing in order to make the tattoos make some sort of sense. Um, you'll see that I added some uh, nervous kind of like flushed blushing on Draven's face, a little bit on Ezreal's as well. I actually really like 
the colors, um, how the colors kind of turned out for this one. It was definitely a little bit more than hashtag just a sketch because I ended up like blurring the foreground and stuff. I went a little bit further than I did on some of the other ones, but I think it was kind of worth it. Like the foreshortening and stuff ended up looking really cool. And I kind of like how Draven's hair turned out as well. Like I'm not a huge fan of like Draven's hair in certain parts, but I decided to just kind of like slick it back and make it like hit the wall. And it ended up looking kind of nice. Added some hickeys and bite marks because <laughs> the spice was real on this drawing. Slapped on some uh, gradient maps on top, some filters and just kind of finished up this sketch. This next one, which I think is the final one maybe for this video. I'm not sure if there's another one, but this one I, I have to say is probably my favorite one of all the ones I've ever done. This drawing is, I think it's a combination of like, I love how the finished product turned out. And also I'm really proud of how like Pantheon came out because I don't typically draw uh, characters like Pantheon. Uh, I usually have a very hard time drawing characters that look like him. And so this one is Pantheon and Yumi. And Yumi is uh, a cat that has like, magical cat that has like this book that she kind of like rides on. And so Pantheon is just a giant hunk of a man, you know? And um, there was a time where you played these two together in a deck. And so I thought it would be really, really cute if he was just like sitting, reading the book that she like rides on. And she was just like looking, <laughs> looking at the book with him and later you'll see that i add two other characters Tarek and shivana in the background because before this deck started becoming a thing you used to play pantheon with Tarek, or you would play pantheon with shivana and so you'll see them in the background kind of like crying essentially that they've been forgotten and now he's like with yumi so i thought it was kind of like a cute addition in the back i always put like these little chibis in the back because the I, I don't know I love like having really derpy chibis in the back and so a lot of these drawings tend to have those and I feel like it just kind of closes out the drawing pretty well it's a cute little like if the drawing is like too serious and like, you need something derpy in the drawing you know um but here you'll see that I don't know if you'll notice but I, I really start kind of struggling with the angle of Pantheon's face and not just the angle but the way that his face is structured. Like I said, I don't normally draw characters like Pantheon. And so I was having kind of a hard time making him look like himself. And for those of you that don't know and maybe play League of Legends, a lot of the Legends of Runeterra art for some of the champions are different than they are in the League of Legends game. So for example, like Ari, like Ari, maybe maybe I'll have like, maybe I'll put the, the splash arts compared in, in on screen so you guys can see it. But Ari, for example, looks one way in Runeterra and one way in League. And I, I personally love how she looks in Runeterra. And Pantheon is also one of those champions. And Pantheon in Runeterra does not have a helmet on. You can kind of see him on the top right there. And I had never really like seen what he looked like. So it was kind of really exciting to be able to kind of use the vision that they gave him in Runeterra and kind of just flesh that out and draw it. I feel like in Runeterra, they really brought him to life. Yeah, we I, I never really felt any sort of way about Pantheon in League, but he kind of grew on me in Runeterra just because, I don't know, like being able to see his face in a lot of the Runeterra art is just so good. Just so incredibly amazing. So if you like League of Legends and you are an artist or you just enjoy art in general, maybe like card games, I honestly, in, like I highly suggest you download the game, give it a try. It's so fun, so free to play, and there's so much beautiful art to admire. So go ahead and if you do, let me know what you think, um, if you enjoy the game and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, and so you'll see me kind of like fleshing starting to flesh things out. It starts to kind of look like him. At this point, I'm actually feeling pretty proud of how he looks just because 
that was going to be the hardest part for me for sure. I'm also pretty proud of how his feet turned out. I, I was kind of struggling to get his feet to look normal at that angle. I'm not very good at like, I love drawing feet. Like I think they're very satisfying once you get the anatomy correct because it's like hands. Like once you get it correct, because there's so many like joints and so many angles and stuff, if you get it right, it's like the most satisfying feeling ever. So I was pretty happy with how those came out. And then I was having then trouble with like the angle of like his legs and his muscles and just making it so like his build really did look like Pantheon, just big and muscly, large and in charge, you know? And then here I start to kind of struggle a bit with how much detail I wanted to put in this. Um, I start to remind myself that this is just a sketch, you know, just reminding myself, keep it loose, keep it, you know, more fun um, because I start like adding too many lines, worrying too much about everything. And so I decided to just like not even finish the line art really and just kind of go in with some solids, some flats and to kind of like retroactively finish the lines. And sometimes I do that. Uh, I think I feel like I, I feel like I've talked about it before where um, especially if I'm doing a sketch, sometimes like I don't even finish the lines. If I'm doing a more refined illustration, what I'll do is if I'm having trouble with the lines, a lot of the times a silhouette with colors helps me build the area of where the lines should be. So like, for example, here I do the tattoos in silhouette because it's just much easier to do that and then retroactively put the lines on top than it is to do the lines like you know what I mean? Like do the outline of the tattoos and all that stuff. And so you can do, you can do this sort of method for a lot of things, either to kind of keep things like quick and fun or to help you determine like a silhouette and an area for your lines. So um, you don't always have to finish the line art before you get into colors. I also feel like it really helps a lot with momentum. If you're a very momentum based artist, I know some artists are very good about like doing things that they find like difficult and just sticking to it until they can do it. I, on the other hand, get super tilted. Like if I cannot get something correctly, I will just get tilted and I don't wanna draw anymore. And so a lot of the times when you see me drawing when I'm on stream or maybe even in these speed paints, you'll see me like jump around from one part of the drawing to another step and then to something else like you see here I didn't even do the lines I just did the silhouette with the colors and then kind of went back into the lines on top so I just keep going back and forth between colors and lines colors and lines because I need to keep the momentum going if I get stuck for too long I just I get really really discouraged and I don't want to continue the drawing so it depends like I feel like knowing yourself as an artist and knowing your process and your what keeps you going in the drawing, what you're good at, your strengths, your weaknesses, etc., is just so important um, to like just having self awareness as an artist about all of those things that I mentioned is just like important in your growth as an artist and how your process as an artist like develops and stuff. So, um, and just exactly like what you need to practice and stuff. If you know your weaknesses, of course, then you'll be able to work on those more effectively. But this, this drawing here, you'll see that I added the, the kind of like the grass on the bottom and like a little blue for the sky, I think was one of the ones that I kind of went like a slight step further and added like a semi background. And I was really happy that I did because something like the grass, for example, you'll see that I use a different brush, like a little textured brush for, for the grass and stuff. And I normally don't do that sort of thing. And I kind of really like how it turned out. It's very simple, but it kind of got the point across of like the grass and just like the ground texture in comparison to like the skin and the book and everything. And just adding the, the shadows of like the sun coming from above. And you'll see later that I also add some reflective light from the grass coming from the bottom, some really soft greens and stuff. I am just like so proud of how this drawing came out. It's not like perfect or super refined by any means, but there's a lot of things in this drawing that I'm usually pretty bad at that kind of turned out pretty nice. So just the type of like anatomy that Pantheon is, adding really simplistic like 
quote unquote like backgrounds that utilize more shapes very sh simple shapes and textures as well as like very simple like coloring you see how like the green is not the green reflective light is not super complex but it just adds a really nice touch to the drawing there's not much shading going on but it's just enough same thing with the sky i'm usually not good at that sort of thing and i don't know i was able to like pull it off and i was i'm honestly pretty proud of that so simple is usually not very good for me and i don't know i just really like the shapes of this and i ended up of course um <laughs> shoving in the derpy chibis there on the right you'll see me start drawing them and yeah I, I definitely have to say this is this is one of my more uh favorite pieces but yeah hopefully you guys like this video i'm so sorry it's taking me so long to upload a new video thank you guys for sticking around hopefully you guys enjoyed it I'll be trying to upload more videos. There's a tutorial coming, so look forward to that. I'm scripting it and thinking about how I'm going to make it, but um, I have also some backlogged work that will be posted soon, so I'm sorry if it's gonna be old content. I'm kind of laughing at these little chibis in the back, um, but uh, thank you again so much for watching. I'll put the links of my comic down below. I also have a Kofi if you guys are interested in supporting there and getting some behind the scenes content for my comic, but otherwise, thank you guys again for watching, subscribe, if you guys want to join the nippy family the more the merrier like the video if you liked it comment down below let me know what you think and i will see you guys next video bye